John Wick 4 is the fourth film in the John Wick franchise. It's directed by Chad Stahelski and stars Keanu Reeves, an actor who appears to be affected with the same immortality virus that has claimed Paul Rudd and Tom Cruise. If you're watching this video, then I already assume you know exactly what's going on. John Wick has been on the run from the High Table, a secret order of assassins who oversee this entire underground world of crime. When we come across our headshot-savvy protagonist this time around, we find a man who has exhausted nearly every resource, alley, and safe haven that he once had. Even his own friends are being targeted, as a new villain, played by Bill Skarsgård, has been appointed by the Council to finally finish John Wick and company for good. But there may just be a solution to Wick's predicament, one that is incredibly risky and holds grave implications for all involved. And thus, epic one-take shootouts ensue. Now if you were to ask me, Jeff, what is your favorite action franchise currently, I'd say Mission Impossible. But if you were to ask me what my second favorite action franchise is, I'd say John Wick. While the Mission Impossible series excels at crafting large, grand-scale action sequences, the Wick movies took a more personal approach, trading in helicopter chases with well-done shootouts. I honestly think we take this series for granted, as we used to get stuck with dull action movies like Taken 3 and Alex Cross. John Wick exploded in the theaters, setting a new bar for action movies. This, along with the Ray films, launched waves of replicas, some even helmed by the same creators. So as the years went on, I always knew that if I wanted high quality action, I could always count on Baba Yaga to deliver. And with John Wick 4, I was pretty amped, as the kids say. This movie was getting perfect scores across the board. 10 out of 10s, 5 stars, no critic had a single thing wrong with it. The people love it. It's the best John Wick movie of them all. And after seeing it, I can understand why people would say that. John Wick 4 is bold, energetic, crisp, and delivers on all of the promises set up by the previous installments. Full disclosure up front, it's not my favorite entry of the action series, however. It's pretty darn entertaining and boasts some of the coolest sequences of the bunch, but I do think there are some structural problems I'll get into in a bit later. But for now, let's just gush over how freaking cool it is to get a decently sized budget action flick that's not a remake, spinoff, or comic book adaption. I was talking to a coworker the other day, and she was looking forward to John Wick 4 because of how streamlined the movies are. It's easy to take this quality for granted, but in a world where you have to watch Book of Boba Fett just to understand Season 3 of The Mandalorian, it's nice to just get a simple sequel to something. Keanu Reeves excels at this kind of role. He commits 100% to every fight scene, and pulls off the man of few words role well, even when one of the words is, whoa. Bill Skarsgård is absolutely chewing the scenery as the villainous marquee. He acts as a stand-in for the high table, which means all of John's anger, and our anger, are directed at him. From the first scene he's introduced, I was like, yeah, this guy's evil and needs to go down. And in my humble opinion, he's the best baddie Wicks faced yet. And then there's the action. Oh boy, where do I even begin? An aspect of any good action film is escalation, and this movie absolutely understands that. There's this great feeling of tension that begins to build whenever a sequence is about to take place. We see elements being set up that will be serviced in the actual fight, and once it pops off, it pops off. There's a great feeling of tangibility present in every confrontation, and when Wick begins to run out of options, the action begins to evolve in the moment. The movie does this improvisational action style several times, but one of my favorite uses of it involves nunchucks. And that is all I'll say. I legitimately don't know how they filmed certain scenes of this movie. One part, in particular, has a one-take sequence that felt like it was lifted right out of Hotline Miami in the best way possible. And in a lot of ways, John Wick 4 sort of plays like a video game movie, with the character having to complete a series of tasks all in service of accomplishing an overarching goal. This plays out over three different countries, with a big sequence headlining each of them. The setup is effective, and I can say it gets progressively better as it goes along. Now, I will certainly say this undoubtedly has the best third act of the entire franchise. It's honestly some of the greatest action I've ever seen, as Wick has to get from point A to point B while being hunted by every hitman in Paris. I got serious The Warriors vibes as he was trying to battle his way through the city. But while this ending sequence is very good, I don't think the first two acts were as strong. That's not to say they were bad, they just weren't nearly as exciting as the conclusion. The way I look at John Wick 4 is that it's sort of the inverse of John Wick 3 Parabellum. 
Parabellum has an absolutely incredible first act, in which Keanu Reeves has to battle his way out of New York with a million dollar bounty on his head. We go from sequence to sequence, watching this man battle with knives, motorcycles, and even horses to get out. But as soon as this part of the movie ends and the actual plot begins, it very quickly gets messy. By the time it ended, I ultimately left the film entertained but unsatisfied. John Wick 4 has the opposite problem. We start out right in the thick of things and are introduced to a multitude of side characters we haven't seen before. Wick himself is barely in the first act, and the filmmakers are working hard to set up these characters as quickly as they can. It almost felt like there should have been a part one and a part two of this story. And then after I did some research, I found out that it was actually the original plan to split it into two different movies. I can't help but feel like this would have been the more effective way to go. The inclusion of the extra characters themselves present both positives and negatives to the movie. This has been a staple of the franchise, with each new entry continuing to build out this intricate world and the people living in it. One of the newcomers this time around is Donnie Yen, who appears to be cornering the market on blind warriors in cinema. He plays a mysterious former hitman named Kane, who brings a whole new way of fighting into the film. We've seen blind characters in action movies fight before, but the way we see Kane take on mobs of enemies was wholly original and very cool to watch. By this point in the franchise, it's hard to imagine someone appearing as an actual threat to John Wick, but I was watching Donnie Yen and saying to myself, oof. Somebody better help John out on this one. And speaking of extra help, we also have Shamir Anderson making his debut performance in the series, playing the role of the mysterious Tracker. He's there to collect on the bounty that was placed on Wick's head, but will only do it once it reaches a certain price. He travels with a pet companion, and a subplot that's meant to allude to the first film. And while I did find these hitmen emotionally complex and cool to watch, the way they were brought into the story felt a bit forced. It ties into the problem I mentioned earlier of perhaps maybe biting off more than they could chew early on, making the first act feel a bit clunky. And it was their inclusion that contributed to the already lengthy runtime. But overall, I had such a blast watching John Wick 4. It hits on all the right notes, services several story arcs that were set up in previous films, while opening up several new possibilities for the future. While it does have a messy start, by the time it ended, I was wholly satisfied with some of the best action I've ever seen on screen. I'm going to give John Wick 4 an A-. Now where would I rank this among the franchise? That's a tough one. Just to give my brief thoughts on each, I think the first John Wick is the most emotionally resonant and streamlined of the bunch. You can show any human being this movie and odds are they'll probably love it. My biggest problem is the way it kind of peaks halfway through. After we get the best nightclub action sequence since Collateral, the action sadly never reaches those heights again, and it ends with Wick fighting an old Russian dude in a hand-to-hand -hand combat match. It reminded me of Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, another film I greatly admire. After the Burj Khalifa sequence, the action de-escalates a bit, and it ends with the protagonist also fighting an old Russian dude in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Both Ghost Protocol and John Wick 1 suffer from the same issue. John Wick 2 absolutely improves on this flaw and delivers a story that builds off of the emotional urgency of the previous installment while continuously topping itself in its own right. We get a cool sequence in Rome, a quiet shootout in a New York train station, and a show-stopping conclusion involving a hall of mirrors. I've already touched on three. It starts off strong but quickly drops off once the actual story begins. Not an awful movie, but definitely the weakest of the bunch. I think my order of the movies would be 2, 1, 4, 3. But that is just my humble opinion. Did you see Don Wick 4? What's your ranking of the franchise? Post your rankings in the comments below and subscribe.